I was in the van at the time of the shooting. And I was on the plane with another teammate for multiple hours. Then you just see everyone in the terminal drop to the ground and after everyone had dropped to the ground, that's when we knew like, this is very serious. I was on my way to the airport and I got a text from my friend saying, what airport are you going to? And I said, Fort Lauderdale, why? He said, you should probably watch the news. It looked like a horror movie. And that's when it actually hit and I was like, oh my God, this is something real. Six swim team members landed at the airport just after the shootings occurred. We're on the air to report a situation unfolding right now at the airport in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, where there has been a shooting. Nine the attack came without warning, as seen on this airport surveillance video obtained by TMZ. 26-year-old Esteban Santiago pulls out his pistol and opens fire. And the latest on this is 13 people were shot today in this mayhem. Five have been killed, another eight injured. So every January, the Westfield State swim team goes down to Florida over winter break for 10 days of training. The Westfield State University swim team, which consists of about 18 female athletes, were traveling to Florida for annual training and a visit to the Swimming Hall of Fame. All of a sudden, after we had grabbed our baggage, there was a lot of, all of a sudden there was a lot of chaos, people running, screaming, you know, run, hide, he has a gun. Six team members arrived at Fort Lauderdale Hollywood Airport that fateful Friday when police say 26-year-old Esteban Santiago shot and killed five people and wounded six others. So we landed in Fort Lauderdale about 12, 15, and I flew with a freshman and we had gotten our bags in a different terminal and we were walking over to meet the vans. So we had just walked over and loaded our stuff into the vans and driven a few feet. We were sitting in traffic and all of a sudden we saw everyone running towards us. We got off the airplane and we got into the baggage claim and a bunch of us were like running around, you know, trying to get like food. We were trying to find a bunch of, just trying to figure out like what we wanted to do. We're so happy we're in Florida. It's so nice that we just escaped the cold weather in Massachusetts. Uh, I was still home when everything was going on. I was on my way to the airport and I got a text from my friend saying, what airport are you going to? And I said, Fort Lauderdale, why? He said, you should probably watch the news. And then I went to my aunt's house getting ready to go to the airport and I got calls from the athletic people here they didn't want me to fly, they wanted me to stay at school. So my, the plane I was in didn't have like outlets, so I had limited use to my phone, but we had the news on, and we were listening to the news, and everyone was terrified because everyone is hearing different things, but we couldn't see anything from the windows. So it was like watching the TV, but being there, it was different. At first, it felt like I was living in a movie. You know, like, is this real? Is this happening? Um, but once I was on the ground, I was not certain what was going on, and I, I pulled out my phone and texted my family to tell them that I loved it in case something happened to me. And at that point, we were sitting in front of the terminal where the active shooter was, and all of a sudden, you see from the right side of the terminal all of the police officers running with the machine guns. No one had any idea like what had happened. We were like, oh God, like this is serious. Then you just see everyone in the terminal drop to the ground. And after everyone had dropped to the ground, that's when we knew like, this is very serious. Like something is happening and someone was surrounding this person on the ground. And we weren't really sure like what we saw until we had gone home after and watched videos of what we saw. We saw the active shooter on the ground surrounded 
And then at that point, people were starting to call their parents to let them know that we were okay. And we drove up maybe 15 more feet and around the corner we saw a victim who was sitting on the sidewalk bleeding out. And there was actually a trail of blood behind him because he had dragged himself out of the terminal to try and escape from the shooter. And this woman was holding out a door and saying, it's safe in here, it's safe in here. So I ran in there and she closed and locked the door behind us. And there was about six people in there with me and they were airport personnel. And all of a sudden everybody was running again. And so I ran into the terminal where it happened and I ran across the blood stain and we had to hide in the terminal because they were worried there was a second shooter. It was more so like, if it was like an, a, a terrorist, if it, this was just like someone got into a fight and something happened until the airport started shutting down right there and then right in front of us, the airport was just shutting down. And I remember kind of joking to everybody, goes, I wonder what's going on, you know, that they must know something that we don't know, and obviously they did. But I was in the first van, so we, I more or less, because it's pretty crowded driving down there, so I'm focusing more on where I'm going, but seeing these people run. Dave was in the front and he handled it really well. He didn't show a lot of emotion, which I think really helped in keeping us calm and getting us out of that situation before we were locked inside. I gotta go back and pick up five other swimmers. And she, at that, right at that point, she said, I don't think you're going back. And a couple of the swimmers also, because of the information they got off their cell phone, said, you're not going back. So then it was a matter of us just hanging there and waiting. Four of my teammates were still running around the airport, one of which is one of my best friends and I wasn't sure if I was gonna see them again. So that was kind of, you know, like heart wrecking. That was a lot more to take in than actually seeing people die in front of me, seeing people shot. We went out and we just saw strollers and bags and everything just left and there was no one, absolutely no one other than this plane. And just like Starbucks and whatever shops, their doors and their, like the things are open and the lights are, some of them are on, some of them are off. It was just empty, it looked like a horror movie. I had no control over what was happening, where I actually had no idea what was happening either. I had no answers until after I was gone. They will remain that way because it's a trauma that doesn't go away. You know, it might filter away, but it won't go away. You know, it will always be in our minds about what happened you know, January 6th, 2017. The one thing that I notice, which still definitely affects me is that you're more aware of your surroundings. Obviously none of us expected to be in that situation. It was kind of a one in a million chance that we just happened to be there. The school's doing an awesome job with helping us. Like with the school lockdown, they made sure ahead of time that we were not on campus. Like they told us ahead of time to leave before this certain time to make sure that it wouldn't trigger any PTSD. We got back. They made arrangements. I even called Tammy and counseling. We met right away with Tammy and the counseling center. And athletics, I think, have been totally supportive of us. The president was supportive of us. He came, you know, and talked to the team. After he finished, I thought it was excellent because he talked about the community and how everybody is together. Very, very fortunate to not have any injuries. Everyone came home safe. Luckily, everyone made it back in one piece. I would definitely say it brought the team closer together. I think we learned to really value each other and grew as a support system. I think it made it more interesting because we had something other than swimming to talk about. But I also like that we talked about, like if someone had something on their mind, they talked to someone else and they didn't feel alone. I feel like everybody had a good time. It was something to get over, but I feel like we all got closer. When we meet recruits, we say, yeah, Florida is like a bonding trip. Well, this year was a different bonding trip that will be forever bonded. So, but my little calendar book, I put December or January 6th, one long day for the swim team.